Hey, it's Kev from Blender Binge. In this video, we're going to go over particles. Some pretty cool stuff, so you definitely want to stick around and watch the whole video, because I'm going to do some really cool stuff toward the end. Anyway, ready? Let's go. Now, particles are really cool in that they allow you to do a lot of cool different effects, like things like rain, uh, explosions, fireworks, um, falling sand, the whole dust, a whole bunch of stuff. So I'm going to go and create a torus because I like that for this example. And I'm going to show you particles. All right. Particles live. You have to pull out this little tab here, or at least I do. Okay, particles are under this little tab. So you select an object that you want to, what's called emit particles. And you select this little particle button here. Okay, this little kind of starry thing. And you hit new. And the second you hit new, you get this entire system here with lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of different options. Basically, if you just go here and you hit play, you get particles. Those are particles. This thing, all this stuff being thrown off, particles. Okay, here are your particles. Now, there are a number of different things you can do with particles, but we're going to get into the basics of controlling them first. So, under type, we have emitter and we have hair. Hair gives you hair, which we're not doing in this tutorial right now. And emitter gives you the particles we're going to be talking about here. The most important tab is this emission. The number right here corresponds to how many particles this is going to throw off. So how many particles this is going to emit into your scene. And that number is controlled by your start and your end frame. And then your lifetime. But lifetime is, is last. I'm going to go with that in a minute. So number, your number of particles. So this is saying emit 1,000 particles, throw out 1,000 particles between frames 1 and 200. So between frames 1 and 200 on my timeline, we are going to create 1,000 particles. Now you can change these numbers. I can change this to 100,000, and now we're going to start seeing, if I hit play, we see a lot more particles. If I change this down to 100, we're going to see a lot less particles, okay? Because we're only emitting that many within this time frame. So if I have 100 particles and I say start time 1 and time 10, now I'm going to throw off 100 particles between frames 1 and 10, and then it's going to stop. They're all done. There it goes. And then for the rest of my scene, no more particles. So does that make sense? This number is the number of particles you throw off. This is the range that the particles are being emitted into the scene. So between, say, 1 and 200, we'll get 100 of these particles. So I'll change this to, like, 5,000 for the next step here where I'm going to show you lifetime. Lifetime is how long your particles live. Think of it as a spark, okay? A spark is, is ignited, thrown off, and then it dies out. This lifetime is telling you if a particle is born at frame 1, it will die out by frame 50. It'll disappear at frame 50. So if you see here, okay, we're only getting this, is, all the particles here are dying out here because they start here, wherever they're born, and it takes them... 50 frames to fall to this distance. So all the particles here have hit the end of their lifetime. If I increase this number to say 250, which is the end of my timeline, they're just going to keep going. They're not going to end. See that? They're falling. Falling, falling, falling. They don't end. Okay. They just keep going the whole length of the animation. If I were to say lifetime 10, okay, now you'll see that they're all dying around here because they're only living 10 frames. Okay, so this is where you really control how many particles are in the scene, how long they live, 
and when they're emitted, when they begin being emitted, and when they stop being emitted. So I can change this to 50, and now they're only going to emit between 50 and 200. So watch. It's going to roll here, and they're not going to start until frame 50. Watch this. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Boom. Particles. As soon as 50 hit, it started emitting. So that's pretty self-explanatory. Okay, I started to kind of just beat that into you here. But this is really important. All right, so the next thing down is we have emit from. So we can emit from vertices. Okay, so my object here, I can emit from these vertices. Okay, I can emit from faces. All right, faces, or I can emit from the volume of this whole object. In the example in this video, it's not going to really show you much of of anything here. So I, it, I don't really have to concern myself with this, but just know that you can throw off from points, you can throw off from faces, and you can throw off from the volume of this whole thing. All right. And in this example, it's just going to be a slight difference. Now, let me turn this back to, to one so I don't have to wait until, until uh, 50 to show you all these examples. So there's not too much of a difference here. Okay, this is coming off faces. This is coming off vertices, and this is coming off the volume of the object. It's subtle here, but when you start really getting into this, this will help you more. Okay, so we're just going to stick to I'm gonna stick to faces for now, and just leave it at that. Next thing down here, we have jittered, we have random, and we have grid. Okay, grid kind of just throws it off in a grid pattern. Okay, it's more orderly. Random is just throwing it off randomly from anywhere. And jitter just kind of like jitters it randomly. Next down, all right, we have velocity. Okay, velocity is kind of cool in that you can control whether it's coming off, you know, the normal or tangent of the normal. Okay, so if I choose tangent here, it starts throwing it off more wildly. All right, it's, it has to do with the direction of, of your polygons. Okay, what's called the, the face is called a normal, but that's beyond this tutorial here. So if I take down normal and I take down tangent to zero, it's just going to kind of drop it. Okay, it just drops it. Boom. I start messing with tangent here. All right, it starts kind of throwing them off in a more wild kind of fashion. Okay. Tangent to zero. I start messing with normal. So these both control the direction and the velocity of your particles. So messing with this, you can go from just having it fall like a shower to kind of having it sprinkle out like a fountain. Okay, so without going into the math of, of this or, or the technicals of this, you just know that you play with these numbers, you get different effects. Okay, see that? Good. Now, here's where it starts getting really kind of interesting. All right, I'm going to turn this back to one and zero. All right, and I'm just going to have these fall. Now, forces here, these are really important too, especially damp. Damp is probably the biggest factor here. If you want to slow your particles down, you turn on damping. Okay, make a note of that. Damping controls the speed of your particles, okay? Drag, you don't see too much. You don't see too much in this example, but damping is really, okay? You got damping at zero, they're moving pretty fast. You get damping at, at one, and they're barely moving at all. And you see that they, you know, they, they'll start dying when they're supposed to at 50. Okay, so speed affects that too. So you really got to get in here and play with this to understand it. But that's that's controlling your speed. And now down here, under render, we're showing path right now. Okay, we can move that to halo. We can move it to line where we're getting different lines. Okay, it's throwing off lines. Um, we can do objects, which we'll get into at the end of this video. So if you stick around, I'll show you something really cool. We have a group I won't worry about too much, and we have billboard, which 
Billboard's really cool too in that you can assign textures to these and it's really good for faking things like smoke and uh, dust and a whole bunch of other things that render really fast. All right. And so here now we have strand render. Okay, we have trail. All right, we can we can create trails. So this is good for kind of creating a firework effect. So there's a number of different things you can do with these, and this will be this is more evident, especially when you start creating things like fireworks and things. All right, so then down here we have the the ones that aren't expanded. All right, so we have children, which in this example, I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to say number to say say a thousand, and now you'll see when I when I when I say children here, simple. They start each particle spawns its own group of kids. All right, under simple, and you have render, so it'll render a hundred. It'll only display ten. That makes your computer go faster. You can see if you change this to a hundred. It'll start throwing off a hundred particles, kind of bunches it up, but it moves a lot slower. So that's why they give you display versus render. All right, size you can you can just have bigger children, you can have smaller children, and that works more with like billboard and other things here. But you could have randomness, so you set the size, and then randomness. Some children will be bigger, some children will be smaller. Okay, you can you can clump your children together. Okay, so a clump of one, we'll clump them. Okay, take that off and they're more just kind of homogenous. All right, at right, zero, especially zero, they're kind of just all over the place. All right, you have clump noise, roughness. So you, you get in and play with these and these affect the look and feel of your, of your particles. All right, and then you have interpolated, which just kind of throws them off in a, you know, it goes, it goes kind of in a linear fashion. So I'll take none here and leave it at that. So interpolated here has a bunch of different things too, but I'm not going to worry about that. All right. There's a bunch of different check marks for different things you can do. I'm going to say none for now. And um, down here, textures, this is where you would assign textures to your billboard. So that is your basic particles. Now, getting a little more complex, we have something here called voids and then we have fluid all right fluid is a whole different video voids are kind of cool in that voids allow you to begin flocking flocking like like birds you can see here we're getting this flocking pattern okay they're they're flocking around and let me turn on uh, lifetime here 250 so you can really see what's happening here Okay, my voids here are kind of flocking around. You can see they're interacting with each other. They're attracting and repulsing and just kind of flying around like a flock would. And you can control that with a whole bunch of different parameters here. And there really is a whole, a whole science and art to using flocking where you can really make like entire like birds and things fly around. Okay, different different uh, different settings allow for different effects. And if I turn it on midstream, then it kind of messes it all up. But you can see here that so if I turn this all to one, you'll start seeing some really really whacked uh, effects happen. So they flock in the middle, and then they kind of change direction, and then they're going and they're they're kind of moving and kind of following each other. See that? That's voids. Voids are really, 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 really cool for different kind of particle effects. And I, again, it's like fluids. I could do. A, I mean, probably will do a whole video on voids and a whole video on fluids as well. But there's quite a bit you can do with this stuff. Now, lastly, I want to show you something really, really cool. And this is this is kind of the payoff for sticking around to the end of the video. Ready? Here we go. I'm going to pause the video here and show you something really cool okay watch this i can go ahead and take suzanne i, I don't know why in every video i just suzanne's funny i like using suzanne and i'm going to scale suzanne down a bit 
Ah. I'll move her off to the side over here. Now watch this. Particles. I can go down here to where it says object. And I can choose an object, Suzanne. And look at this. All of my little Boyds have now turned into Suzanne's. Oh, isn't that cool? So, I can control that with size. I can say size. Random. And now watch Suzanne's flock together. Oh, look at all those Suzanne's. They're all flying around and flocking. Look at that. Like little, like little ants. Little bugs. And the cool thing is that if I had, say, if I made like ants and I animated the ants with, you know, and I, and I say I baked all those ants out with all their animation, I can have all these ants kind of scampering all over the place. And from a big distance, that kind of looks like ants. So if I had like, you know, wanted a, a special effect of like cockroaches coming out of a drain or something, well, here you go. Pretty cool. And all like little Suzannes all flocking around. And you can use groups too. You can use groups of objects too. But that's a little more, a little crazier for this. So here I can choose, I can put on rotation and they're all scampering around. Alright. I can change the size and I can have random size too. So some will be small, some will be big. See that? Told you, there's the payoff. Stick around to the end of the video, get the good stuff. Alright. So there's quite a bit. A whole bunch of cool things that you can do with particles. And I'm going to probably do a whole series on these because you can just do so much, so much cool stuff with this. So hopefully you got something out of this. Hopefully you learned something. And if you did, hit like, hit subscribe, hit share, little bell notification, and a uh, little heart thingy that I saw. And, and uh, I'll just keep making more of these, all right? So enjoy. Go. Get in here, play with this, and uh, start making some cool stuff. All right, talk to you later. Bye.